Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Rudolf van der Berg. Rudolf is consultant with 20 years of experience in all internet and telecom related topics. In the past, Rudolf was an economist and policy analyst at the OECD, working on telecommunications and internet related policy, including internet exchange points and IP interconnection. Okay, Rudolf, you know about your challenge. Telling us what, if anything, is wrong with the European Commission consultation on the future of telecoms and connectivity? Well, there are so many things wrong with it that we could do like three hours just to go th through it easily. But one thing that annoys me is questions 50, 51, 52, 53, where they go on about large traffic generators and how they should be charged. Uh, all the while forgetting that research in the last decade has shown that almost all large EU telcos charge certainly smaller traffic generators for traffic delivered on their network. So RCEP says that in France, paid peering, so delivering traffic directly to uh, French telcos, actually costs more than competitive transit, which would deliver you connectivity to the rest of the world. And it costs up to several euro per megabit per second per month to deliver it onto certain networks. And that is completely not mentioned in this report. I heard prices in Germany of 80 cents per megabit if you want to deliver traffic onto Deutsche Telekom, and Deutsche Telekom then calls that transit. But as one hosting provider explained to me, I don't need Deutsche Telekom for transit. Their routes are rubbish. I just need traffic to Deutsche Telekom. But if I deliver it over my normal transit lines to Deutsche Telekom, those lines are saturated. And I've heard this confirmed by Deutsche Telekom personnel that I spoke to uh, at a a drinks event and um, their lines are saturated on the transit side and they think that's completely normal because well we're Deutsche Telekom you need to pay us and this goes as far as during COVID Deutsche Forschungsnetz which are the German universities had their own video conferencing solution and Deutsche Forschungsnetz has will used to have a terabit of connectivity to the rest of the world, now has over two terabit of connectivity to the rest of the world, so they are well connected. German ISPs all realized, oh, all those students are at home doing video conferencing for their classes, and many of them got direct connections to Deutsche Forschungsnetz so that students could follow classes online. All of this was done using peering, without any costs to either party other than buying a fiber optic link uh, in a data center. Total cost, probably 10K at most. Except Deutsche Telekom. Deutsche Telekom had 20% packet loss to the German universities during COVID. The problem wasn't the universities, they had enough capacity. The problem was Deutsche uh, Telecom didn't have enough capacity in its network. So instead of fixing its network, Deutsche Telekom used that as leverage on Deutsche Forschungsnetz to force them to pay Deutsche Telekom for the traffic. Mind you, this is less than 100 gigabit. The interface is 100 gigabit, 100 gig interface, 5,000, 10,000 euro. It shouldn't cost a lot of money for a network like Deutsche Telekom that boasts that it has like 80 terabit of capacity. If you can't handle 100 gigabit, you shouldn't be running a network, certainly not at a national scale. But they had 20% packet loss. The only way the packet loss went away was when Deutsche Forschungsnetz became a customer of Deutsche Telekom, which is really weird because. They already had two transit providers that they selected probably through a European procurement procedure, which is all regulated. But Deutsche Telekom forced itself as a provider that got paid. 
Telefonica, Vodafone didn't even do that. They were nice enough to figure these are students, we need to connect with them. We peer. In Italy, Telecom Italia said, we don't normally peer in Italy, but it's COVID, let's peer. They're now actually turning it down a little. But yes, this is weird. And it's an example of how these questions are just wrong. It's not about not getting paid, it's about getting paid more what the large telcos want. And it's particularly the smaller networks that they are pushing towards this and have pushed them for decades already. And the questionnaire just doesn't address this. So it's not about large traffic generators. It's about big telcos using their termination monopoly to extort money from other networks for running their network badly, as we saw with Deutsche Telekom. So, yeah, that just gets me annoyed. <laughs> Thank you, Rudolf. I think it, it probably got a lot of uh, German universities annoyed too, <laughs> from what you tell me. So basically, the missing question is, how much are you paying your telco as <laughs> a content provider now? And do you feel it's fair um, exactly. moving forward? <laughs> Exactly. Thank you very much, Rudolf. Have a great day.